Thank you. All right, I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Norwalk Public Library Board of Directors for October 2021. Present are Sharon, Patsy, Janie, Moyna, Mary, uh, and Alex, board members, uh, Sherelle Harris, Executive Director, is also present, and we have a member of the public, uh, Mohindar. So, uh, welcome, and let's get to our agenda. Um, I do have an addition to the agenda, which is a discussion about, well, a notification really I sent out earlier today uh, concerning the possible availability of funds from the federal government for the uh, uh, rescue plan that might be available to the library. And so I'll add that as item 6C and make a brief uh, update on that. Though it's just gonna be the information I sent around earlier today by uh, email. So uh, <clears throat> Mohinder, you are a member of the public. Do you wish to make any comment tonight? No, I'm, in fact, I'm good. Whatever the decision okay. board makes it, I accept it. Thank you. Yep. And congratulations on your getting your COVID booster shot, and we hope you and your family will be uh, very healthy. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the next item is approval of the minutes of uh, September 9th, 2021. Uh, I don't know whether that's Cheryl on the phone or somebody from her office, but I'd like to compliment uh, the Telesco Secretarial Service for an excellent set of minutes. So I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes, then we'll entertain any suggestion for uh, revisions. May I request a motion to approve? I so move. Mary Patsy Brescia okay. moves to approve. Mary Mann seconds. Are there any uh, revisions that uh, anyone would like to propose? I just saw on, um, it's, it's quick. D, um, sorry, let me get back here. For D, there's just a spelling out error with libraries. Um, and I also That's noticed, good. did you get that? And then um, I also noticed on 7J, the Acorn Fund Foundation. I don't know if you guys wanted to add this or not, but there was discussion about digitalizing and we talked about it, Moina brought it up. I don't know, it was left out of the comments intentionally because it was like, side talk, but I didn't know if it was important enough to add. That's all I have. Well, I guess the question is, would you like to suggest a sentence or phrase to add it in? Or not, I mean, it's really up to you. And these minutes are not intended to be verbatim yeah. transcripts, but really a record of the actions and the subject matter. So. It's really up to the board to okay. use their discretion. But can I ask, did we decide to purchase the books or did we just leave it hanging? I don't remember, honestly. We decided to purchase the, uh, the DVDs. So that should be part of the minutes, certainly. There was an action taken. Yeah, that's there. Um, I, I'm fine with it now, not being in there. I don't know, it was Moina who brought it up, so. I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm fine with it as is. I think that, um, you know. But it doesn't people, say we voted. Yeah, it doesn't say we voted to purchase, to move forward with the purchase. That's my point. I think we were just accepting a donation of the yeah, videos. But, yeah, but I asked it and I can't remember, did we say let's go ahead and activate that purchase or not? I think, that was going to be, I think, Patsy, that was going to be under the foundation minutes. Okay. Okay. okay thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Any other uh, comments or revisions? Okay. If not, then uh, all in favor of approving the minutes as submitted, please say aye or raise your hand. Any objection? Any. Uh, um, abstentions, then the minutes have submitted or approved. 
A nice job, Cheryl. Thank you. Um, so under the president's report, just three brief items. First of all, uh, I circulated an article earlier this week, uh, which describes how the uh, Ferguson Library in Stanford has been expanding access to its internet by uh, utilizing uh, outdoor routers so that uh, uh, people could come and connect to the internet through the library without going inside. Uh, I realize it's a little late in the season, but I think this was a very good idea. We don't know what next spring or summer is going to bring. And there's some time left still um, in this fall, which has been very kind to us in terms of weather. And uh, I asked uh, uh, Sherelle to, you know, obviously consult with Lori, our IT director. And I have not heard back about uh, the cost or feasibility. I bumped into Lori when I was picking up some stuff at the library who said she thought it could be done. So I don't have a dollar figure or a specific action, but I thought we could have discussed tonight and approve the concept of expanding our outdoor internet uh, accessibility uh, because we've also been discussing as will happen later on in the agenda, the whole issue about um, you know the outdoor area around the library. So I think this would be a, a good way to expand our service, expand the access to the internet, which has been a key resource for the library to make available to the public during this time of COVID. And uh, that's why I thought maybe we could discuss it and then approve it conceptually and you know leave it to Sherelle and Lori to uh, work out uh, the details. I have a I, question. Sure, uh, Patsy. Um, if we did this, which I think is a great idea, um, would people be able to come to the library when we're not open, sit outside, and get this facility? Would they be able to do that? Do you know? Actually, they can do that now, and they do do that now. So we do have the capability, like it extends. Um, like if someone's sitting outside, either the front or the right. back of the main library or in the parking lot, they can get Wi-Fi as well as Sono. If they're sitting in the Sono, um, they can get it. Yeah, that could be really a great service if we articulated it or advertised it or promoted yes. it. They, they right. definitely know it because when we leave work, we see people sitting out in their yeah. cars, okay. sitting on the, the front steps of the library. So, yeah. But it, it would be nice. I guess we could, you know, advertise it a little more. Yeah, and if there's, I don't know how uh, strong the signal is, if there's any equipment that could make it stronger if it's not strong as it could be. Um, so I too am like to totally in favor of, of this idea. Uh, the one thing I think Sharon mentioned it in her email is that, <clears throat> that um, you know, like, People need play, especially if they have laptops and things like that. They need a place to put their laptop. They need a place to sit down. If they want to go in and get a cup of coffee. They could, you know, tables and chairs, basically. Right. Well, we're kind of in a, a situation in which, you know, uh, Sherelle's going to be recommending some, uh, you know, outdoor facilities. And we're going to also have to take a look at a policy. Uh, generally. Um, but yes, I think uh, uh, this is all part of doing these things together. We're a little late to say a little late in the season, but uh, we also have, I uh, know on the first floor, a couple of those Adirondack chairs that, uh, you know, might be put out for use. Um, and I know that after Sharon contacted me about supporting this idea, I suggested to Sherelle that she look at those Adirondack chairs. Uh, maybe being put outside for the remainder of this season. I'm supposed to be 80 tomorrow. It's been very, it was very nice today and people can still get some use out of it. Sharon, do you want to have any more comment about what, you know, your, your thoughts? Um, no, I just, I fully support it. Um, everything you're saying from, but I do think again, that we need seating to make it comfortable for everyone. Yeah. Well, you know, it was odd this year with, um, obviously with the COVID situation and the parking lot not being used 
as much as it otherwise would be, and us having vaccination events uh, with the van from uh, medical providers and stuff. So, so it's very complicated logistics this year, but hopefully we can have a smoother landing for uh, when it gets to be warm weather next year. But there's still, I think, a couple of weeks where you know we might want to at least use what we have. So any other mm-hmm. any other discussion? I also think you know, I mean, um, as we've seen in the past, like with weather emergencies and things like that. I mean, for people to really know that the outside of the library can get internet and yes, during some of those times, you know, um, when people lose power. Right. So I think that that's an additional kind of resource that, you know, at any time of year, it, it's important, for, you know, would be good for the library. I remember when I operate, when uh, the Sandy storm hit, we had some friends of ours who live over in West Norwalk outside of the third taxing district who didn't have electricity like for 10 days. And they had to come to uh, my house to take showers and charge their cell phones. And, you know, when you hear these stories about the hurricanes in Louisiana or Florida, you know, one of the big needs is for people to charge up their devices. So us having internet access uh, definitely could be a, a benefit there. So oh, that, that, bring, that, that brings the question, do we have outside charging uh, ability? Well, we're going to have the uh, solar yeah. stations that Sherelle uh, got through the grant that she Apply for about electric plugs, the old fashioned kind. <laughs> we'll have to see how the solar ones work first, Patsy. Okay. I'm way so behind the times. And what about <laughs> cybersecurity? Because sometimes when you have those types of um, situations, there can be a lot of cybersecurity issues. So I don't know if you have that. Taking what care do you mean of, for Janie for plug-in or for I mean solar? like people yeah like uh, I don't know when you use uh, the Wi-Fi you can sometimes some people can sometimes steal your information just through that so is there any kind of uh, cybersecurity to protect people's information from being stolen when they're using the Wi-Fi? So That's a good we actually point because, just underwent sorry. an audit, so they should right. be able to tell us. I mentioned that um, at the last meeting, but that is that is an excellent point. Um, you know, so when we have our second discussion, I can, can ask that question. Okay. And since we do it even now, I mean, what we're talking about here is enhancing and expanding a uh, access that we currently give. So uh, I think that's a good, good point, uh, Janie. Very Thank you. Good point. So can we, uh, I think, just have a, a motion to uh, approve the uh, expansion of uh, outdoor internet access uh, and uh, give the implementation discretion to Sherelle in terms of, uh, you know, implementation so that we can try to get something out of this season if possible. So... I'll, sure. I'll motion, yeah, I'll no, motion sure to move. that. Okay. I'm happy to second. Thank you, Patsy. Any further discussion? And if not, all in favor say aye or wave aye. your hand. Any opposed, any abstentions, and that's approved unanimously. So thank you. That's a, I think, good initiative for the, the public. Uh, second, um, I circulated a article today, and I apologize for doing it late but I, I could have, couldn't find it in my uh, hard drive for a while, of this uh, idea of the library of things. I'm not proposing that we have any action on it tonight, but uh, the concept is that uh, some libraries around the country are loaning out uh, things like appliances and tools and other things that have not customarily been part of a lending program. And what I've asked uh, Sherelle to do is to discuss this with the supervisors, um, think about things that might work, things that definitely would not work, uh, no pressure about timeline on making this decision, but it is something that reflects, I think, the recognition that libraries are growing in 
their service as uh, more than uh, resources for content, but also becoming community centers for additional services. You know, we do the passport services now. We are trying to do other services for city and state agencies. Um, obviously, we've been a facility now for vaccinations and testing. So these are all expansions of traditional library services. And I thought since other libraries around the country are considering this, it's something that we should be discussing. So I don't know whether you want to have a brief discussion. And again, I apologize for sending the article around uh, today. I realized there wasn't a lot of time. Uh, uh, but I think we'll be having an interesting discussion when we get feedback from Sherelle and the supervisors. I think anything we can do to expand, you know, within reason is is what we need to do. But one one thing that I've always wished was that um, the library had a notary uh, uh, notary uh, because we do, it, Patsy. They do. It do. Okay. They do. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. That. I'm, I wasn't aware of it. And so many times, you know, in my business, I've always had to send people, um, you know, to banks or to attorneys. So um, I don't know how we, we market that. That's <laughs> a good it's point. A we should. It's a great service. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Alex, I read the article. I think it's a very interesting service. Um, I guess my issues and concerns would be, you know, right at the moment, um, we are short on staff, especially at SONO. We don't have any assistant, uh, you know, director. I think um, it's just not a conversation I'm interested in until, you know, the library has come up to staff and, and you know, everything is in place because we're talking about a lot of effort, you know, um, do we have the storage? So I think there's a lot of you know, um, thought that we might want to put into that before we even consider that, you know, at this time. That's a fair point, Mary. Thank you. Yeah, and I'd, I'd like to also say, I agree with that, making sure that we're up to up to par on hiring. But um, in the meanwhile, I would really recommend that we do some sort of community engagement to see what people actually want. Yes. Um, because, you know, we all want different things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think at some point, you know, when, when we hear back from Sherelle and the supervisors, you know, we could think of whether we want to have a uh, little mini survey survey on our website asking that question. You know, we could figure out what the other libraries who do this have an offering and what are their most popular or requested items. You know, but this, this is obviously takes some time and I think Mary's point is well taken, but we can still do some discussion and planning and uh, and surveying while we're dealing with the um, filling the staff vacancies. And I think I mean, Cheryl, you might. Um, I think they there. I think in the children's section, they're like they do. You can take out toys and stuff, right? Not at present, COVID. but prior games. Yeah, and before like before COVID. Yep, so games if, and, yeah, yeah, to see how that. I mean, those, you know, toys are things. And mm -hmm. um, I wonder how that, you know, kind of worked out in terms of things coming back and in one piece. And For the most part, like yes. Every now and then some missing pieces, but for the most part, yes. Yeah. So, I, so a preliminary discussion, you know, that we did have, I know the supervisors are really interested in um, advertising um, Studio One a little bit more as we discuss this. And then my thought was the telehealth, um, you know, once we get the soundproof pod, that might be, you know, a way for people who can't get to the doctor, or, you know, wh how, wherever we are with COVID to have their doctor visits too. So maybe we have things like, I don't know, um, they can take their blood pressure, you know, they can do something. So, um, so I think it'll, you know, the supervisors are, and I are planning to meet in a week and a half. So um, I think it's going to be a very interesting discussion. Good. We actually had one of the first telehealth telemedicine facilities in the state where the AmeriCares operated a telehealth facility at um, uh, the old neon headquarters on, South Main Street, and they had a 
both a walk-in clinic and a telemedicine clinic. And I uh, did a bill in the, in the legislature to sort of authorize uh, studies of telemedicine. And the areas where it turned out to be most useful is mainly radiology, where mm. uh, somebody could, could uh, be in contact with their physician while the physician read and shared with the patient over a telemedicine connection, uh, a, an x-ray, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, blood pressure, I'm not so sure about Sherelle, but, uh, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, I well, think I mean, you know, if they're speaking and, you know, he, the, they want to see the blood pressure, and he, I just kind of threw that out there, but I just think um, yeah. that's a way that we could really help. Yeah. In the library. But, but blood pressure would work too, because as they're taking the blood pressure, it's like when a... Um, they can watch. Yeah, they can watch and they can tell them what that blood pressure is. Tell the doctor at that. Well, they have to wear their Apple Watch or something because the... <laughs> uh, the not really, because be I know it's been done because they come here for the United Healthcare come here to do okay. uh, telehealth for my husband and that's what they do. So I know it works. Okay. It's not something okay. that's not working. It does work. Good. All right. <laughs> Okay, so, um, you know, uh, please review the article if you haven't had a chance. We'll hear what Sherelle and the supervisors had to say. Maybe we can figure out a little kind of mini survey to put up on the, on the website. And maybe we can add it to the survey, you know, find some type of wording to the survey that I shared that I'm mm -hmm. hoping, um, you know, we can discuss tonight. Okay, because you did a good job of paring that survey down to a, a reasonable number of questions. I don't know if you want to... Add, start adding stuff back in, but uh, you know we can discuss it. Okay. Okay. Um, so the uh, the last item tonight for me that we added item C is that um, I guess the uh, mayor presented to the common council day before yesterday a uh, plan about how the city would consider projects both from city departments and from nonprofit agencies to allocate some of the, you know, 39 million in the uh, American Rescue federal plan money that will be coming into Norwalk. Um, so I sent around, I just became aware of it yesterday when I read Nancy on Norwalk and Sherelle and I discussed it this morning with uh, Lamont Daniels from Community Services. So uh, what I've done is I've asked uh, Sherelle to, again, consult with the supervisors and come up with a list of possible projects that the board could consider uh, submitting for funding. Um, it's a pretty healthy chunk of change. And, uh, you know, the library has not gotten, you know, significant funding in the most recent capital budgets. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that we can, you know, utilize these funds for projects, both to improve our two facilities, as well as to enhance programming. I know that one of the projects, I guess, the finance director is considering is, is uh, improving the high-speed internet uh, access throughout the city. That would certainly uh, be good for us, and there may be ways that we can be upgrading our uh, internet capabilities, as we've started to do with the two refresh projects in the um, uh, community rooms. So uh, I don't have anything to put before you tonight because we just became aware of this uh, yesterday, but uh, I know that Sherelle will be, I think, coming back with uh, some projects for us to consider at a future meeting. I asked uh, Lamont today, is there any deadline for a city agency submitting a proposal and he said no. Um, so we have time to, you know, uh, do this on a thoughtful basis. But if there is any deadline that pops up, we could always have a special meeting of the board to go over a list and, and decide what our priorities should be. I have a question. Um, I, I did, uh, I was at the council meeting and did listen to the half hour, 40 minute presentation. It was pretty impressive. And I wondered, you know, uh, about our capital project, uh, if there's any possibility of kickstarting that for us through this program. It's $39 million that we're talking about. 
So, so I don't know. I, to talk to, yeah. Patsy, as I look at it, um, I don't see that that would, first of all, I don't think that the city wants to do that because of the deadlines involved in the agreements that we have with uh, Jason Milligan and stuff. But uh, it doesn't seem to qualify under the guidelines that this money is sent for. This money is intended to be, you know, more or less help localities and states deal with the impact of the COVID on their services and resources and facilities. And, you know, it might be difficult, or I won't say impossible, for us to uh, try to bring in the expansion project. There may be yeah. aspects of modernization that we could qualify for, I'm not sure, but that's something I'm hoping that Cherelle and the supervisors will take a look at. Well, we need to uh, at least ask and then know whether we don't want to have an opportunity that we might have missed, so. Yeah, and this 39 million is for the whole city, by the way, obviously oh, I not. I know, I understand. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alex, I have a question for you. Um, so this money is supposed to be used towards, and Cheryl, towards COVID items like workforce development programs or like outdoor seating, or are we gonna spend it on, you know what I mean? Like what are, what are the restrictions? So I know um, that just with like with the other um, grant that they want things like, what do you call it? The um, hygienic seating um, and things like that. But uh, we can also talk about projects, you know, like whether it's the expanding of the Wi-Fi. So I'd have to take a closer look at it before I discuss it with supervisors and also discuss it with Lamont to see, you know, his vision as well. But, um, you know, what are our limitations? A person I think, no, no, sure, that's a good, I mean, I think clearly outdoor furniture that could uh, enhance utilization of the library without it being fully reopened due to COVID is something that would qualify. Mm -hmm. I know that he said today, though we're going to be making this decision, not Lamont, but I know that today he said that the furniture that uh, Sherelle has been interested in would qualify and that's indoor furniture. I don't see any difference of outdoor furniture that serves the same as central purpose. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah, so that's why I said in my email today to Sherelle, both the facilities and program resources are things that we should uh, consider. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have a chance to, as a board, you know, prioritize this list. Okay, yeah, I would love to see it work towards sort of bringing back the community and all the things that were yeah. affected by COVID. If you haven't had a chance, take a look at the PowerPoint I circulated that was uh, presented by the mayor on Tuesday. That that sets out the guidelines. You know, they're they're general, but you know they still have some um, some restrictions. So take a look at those so that you're familiar with it when you start to consider the list that Cheryl is going to bring to us. Okay, Can I, I ask a question about the? Um... The laptop cart, that was something that was approved in the capital budget for this year, right? Yes. Okay, so that's that's all that's already something that we've so it's actually ready and um we've chosen a company black box. So um I'd say we should be at a point where we're ready to get started in November. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, actually, no one anticipated at the time we were discussing it. We were discussing it mainly in terms of having the ability to use a laptop in any place in the library without being restricted to the computer area on the first floor. But now it turns out that that's exactly what we would need to do for social distancing anyway. anyway. So it's really uh, fits very nicely with our, our reopening uh, status. Yeah. All right, well, this was for information and, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to take action on it uh, sometime in the future. And we look forward to getting a long, 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 long list from Cheryl. Okay. Thank you. Cheryl? Okay, so I don't know if you, if anyone has had the chance to look over the survey to have a discussion, or if you want to go through it, I can do a share screen. <clears throat> 
I, I did go over it, and I thought again, you made a lot of improvement by paring it down. So, but but I I defer to others. So I, I'm sorry. I can I just wanted a little. I mean, I'm sorry if I missed something at a meeting or or so. But what is the the context for sur sending out the survey? So we would send it out in one of our newsletters, and the supervisors. Um, you know, we'll have a private thing with, with, with their contacts. So like I would work with the Board of Ed, Vicki would work with her parents, Cindy would work with the senior centers so we can, you know, get a little more up close and personal. Um, so that's one thought to have, you know, just mini focus groups. And then we'll also share it, um, circulate it through our newsletter. Okay. And if the board, you know, if you wanted to have mini focus groups as well, you know, with, with, your various groups, we'd welcome that as well. I guess I'm just asking because um, the last time we did a survey, you know, it was in the context of the strategic plan that we were working on 2019 mm -hmm. with Leslie and I can't remember who it was. Her right. name. So, I, so I hear what you're saying. So this would be more what, what do people want post COVID or where we are now in post COVID? You know, are people, you know, more apt to um, use our electronic resources now? Have they gotten used to that? Um, do they want to come back in? So it's just us really knowing where we need to put our resources. Okay. So I, I guess that, that was what I was, um, like the context of uh, like a post or mm -hmm. during COVID, like kind of how well, where are, are we and now how because we are shifting and yep. um and exactly. how the library during covid because i didn't really that's what i thought when i started to open the survey but when i was actually reading the survey i was like is this about covid or is it just general or i did well I, you know covid changed a lot of habits so we really just want to know where people are what do you want like do you want to are you do you want to use the library on sundays do we you know do we want to open on sundays again um, when are you more likely to use the library in the event we need to change our hours? Um, how are you using our library? You know, um, what organizations would you like us to partner with? Like we've done a really good job with, you know, partnering with Griffin, um, also with uh, CT, Unite, Unite CT, where they were coming down and helping with rent. So we just really want to know what the public wants. Like we can say all day, what we want, but if it's not what the public wants, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. And it's just, you know, I, I, I would just be curious to know COVID changed a lot of habits. So this is our way of just finding out what the community wants so we can work from there. Let me ask, is there anyone who would like to uh, have more time to review the survey before we authorize Sherelle to send it out or have people had a chance to look, to look at it? Again, I'm, I've looked at, it, I'm satisfied and I, I think it's a, you know, good improvement because it's more likely to get a response because it has fewer, fewer questions. Um, yes, Alex, I did have an opportunity to um, review it. What I liked about it was the fact that it wasn't a lot of questions. They were very simple, you know, and I think people would be more prone to complete it, you know, um, because it's not going to take them a long time. So I'm, I'm fine with it as is. Okay. Any other comments or... So, cause I mean, when I read some of the questions, like how often do you visit the library? I mean, you know, before COVID, like we were there every single Saturday, my, like my, me, my kids, you know, the chess program was going on. It was like, that was, and obviously since COVID, we don't do that, but like, so I, I'm not exactly, I just feel like, like some of the questions, do you, do you want to know how often I visit the library today? Like all of this in the last for today. Pardon me. Everything everything is for today. Okay. None of this is 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 you know the past. It, it's definitely today. 
because we want to know how people want to use it today. Has anything changed since COVID? And even, you know, if it wasn't COVID, we just really want to know, you know, like you said, some people are there all the time. Some people come once a week, they get 20 books and they're good, you know, for their three weeks. Some people come every three weeks. We just want to know what people are thinking so we get, so it can help um, us determine our course of action. Um, this is just a question, Sherelle. Um, mm -hmm. Is it possible maybe to put a comment section in it um, if people want to express? We know, did have it, but we took it out. But oh, if okay. you, no, but if you agree, if you, if you think, or no, the board thinks we should put it in. Pending, you know, a Moina's question of, I used to visit the library all the time you know, prior to COVID, um, mm -hmm. you know, not sure what the usage is going to be now that, that someone just might want to make a comment in regards comment. to it, that's all. Sure. You also get into syntax with, would you like to be able to visit the library, you know, uh, every day, whether then are you visiting it? And the answer I was going to be no, because you can't, you know, so. Well, right. actually, they can and they do. Well, so you have some it's a, there is a distinction, though, between there are changes from what we used to be able to do to what we're doing now. I haven't had a time to to unfortunately to review it, so I I, I can't comment further. If you I can quickly share screen if you want to just see it quickly. Except Alex. Alex, are you okay with that? Sure. Okay, let's see. I'm on two computers, so it's, uh, hold on, let's see. share screen. Can you see it? Yes, yes. Okay, so. The first one is age group, and we'll be working with the schools, you know, as well. Uh, I'm sorry, sometimes this computer goes wacky. Um, are you an adult, you know, who has, has a child living in your household? Um, when do you mostly use the library? Weekdays, Saturday, Sunday. Um, this will help us know if people want Sundays, and actually, you know what? thinking we should change it, when would you like to? Yes. Yeah, that was that was my point. I got yeah. you. Yeah. It would be a shame okay. if we um, give up on Sunday after having worked so hard to get open yeah. on Sunday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what I'm really curious because nobody's really said anything lately about Sunday, but you know, it'd be nice to know if People are interested in Sundays again. Um, the time frame, you know, you're most likely to use the library mornings, afternoons, evenings. This will help us to, you know, you know, figure out our hours. So far, you know, the tent opening at 10 has worked really well. Um, how often do you visit the library? Um, yeah, like, 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 would you like to have that question be, how often would you like to visit the library? To, yes. Again. Or something like that. I think these are if these questions could all be kind of a future tense, you know. Yeah, if it wasn't projection. for COVID, what would you be doing? Yeah, right? I think that, that yeah. that's the point. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then why don't you use the library? Um, the question doesn't apply to me because I use it. Um, it's too far to travel, too busy to get, get information from other sources, hours inconvenient. Um, they use a different it's library. Interesting to see that there's not a parking issue there. Hey. <laughs> we can add it, but nobody's no, 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 about no. parking. Don't you dare. Blackwood Mansion Mansion. Blackwood Mansion Mansion is too busy. <laughs> what about health concerns? I mean, I feel like a lot of people aren't visiting the library yes. right now because of health yeah. concerns, right? Yeah. Well, can I make a suggestion? Again, I don't mind going through this. Maybe what we could do is, is 
you know, ask that Moina, who has experience in marketing, go through the language of the questions with Sherelle and, uh, you know, come up with uh, a version that's geared toward the future. And okay, uh, I'll be happy to. I'll be and happy. I'm glad to approve this subject to Moina and Sherelle agreeing on, on the language. That is subject to the restraints of COVID. Also, you know, the language. Yeah, yeah, yeah but that's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Well, that sounds like a good plan. Sure, is that okay with you? Perfect. Yeah, fine. Okay. Alex, can I, can I ask a quick question? Sharon, please. Yeah, um, that sounds great. Um, I just wanted to, since I started on the board, I think I'm almost at two years. I haven't seen the strategic plan. So my question is, how... I guess, how often are you guys gonna go back in and now that we have COVID, go back in and update the strategic plan to now incorporate some of these answers? Well, I think the idea is this, I'm gonna uh, contact Leslie and uh, have a discussion with her about what some other libraries have been doing. Uh, we need to post our plan and then uh, I've actually written a letter as an introduction to it describing the kind of odd situation we're in. And also because the construction timetable has been changed. So I think that's a good point that uh, I'll come back at the next board meeting with a proposal about updating the strategic plan. So I see on number 11 that the notary public is there. And is it is it for both libraries, both branches? Is there one Not in South yet. North? Right now, we don't have one at Sono, but we have somebody who's working on getting, becoming a notary public. We get so many people coming in. It's, it's, it's it, you know, yeah. well-needed service. Yes, it is. And we thought, you know, um, number 11 was also a way to advertise services that people may not know about. Yeah. So, and then, you know, would you like the library to partner with the following organizations? And then that's it. We did have an open-ended question, like, you know, um, would you like to tell us more or, or comments? Um, but we took it out, but we can certainly add it again. I didn't think about this, Sherelle, but on that number, uh, at number 11, you might want to say Friends of the Library Book Sale. People might not know what Friends Book Sale is. Okay, sorry, I just I, was... I, I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, we all know what it no, is. No, no, that's good. When you when you said I was thinking it was the partner <laughs> thing, but no, I it makes sense right here. I mean, I like the idea of an open-ended question, just like comments. I had someone come up to me recently and just go just gush about how like how rely how awesome the library has been during COVID in terms of its virtual programming. And I feel like there are a lot of people out there and it might be nice to collect some of those types of comments for, for you know, people at the library staff or. Yes, yeah. Perfect. And it's also important for our funding, you know, that uh, we're responsive, we're being responsive and people mm -hmm. appreciate it. Okay, great. So, uh, Morna and Sherelle will uh, work on the language and then, uh, you know, send it out. Sounds good. Good, thank okay. you. Yep, no, thank you. And so, fine free, here we go again. So, um, it's work, we just sort of had a soft um, announcement. We didn't make a big deal of this yet. Maybe we should about, um, you know, um, not having fines for children, but we would also love to expand this um, to adults as well. So I sent out um, some literature and apparently I guess uh, going fine free has been around for several years. Um, COVID has seemed to really, um, I guess, highlight um, inequality. <laughs> And so, you know, many libraries in Connecticut, 
the major libraries, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, are all, um, you know, going fine free. And so, you know, fine free would mean they just wouldn't pay fines, but if they lose the book, they would have to pay the replacement cost. So it's something I would like for the board to consider, even if we don't act on it tonight, but just to consider or have the discussion about being totally fine free. Well, I think we ought to put it on next month's agenda as an action item. Uh, conceptually, I'm very much in favor of it. I just want to make sure that the city yes. does not expect us to cover the lost revenue. So I think reminding us about the revenue consequences would be helpful just to we make sure the city is aware that uh, we won't be making that up in some other way. Okay. One of the things that really caught me is, you know, um, in the article where it said, you know, people are saying, well, people won't learn responsibility if there's no fines. And um, one of the directors said, that's not, it's not up to us to teach that responsibility. It's up to us, you know, to provide equality. And I, I thought that was pretty profound. I that. And so uh, next is that, you know, um, Griffin Health is back again. Um, so they'll be with the libraries, both libraries, two days a week through um, November 19th. And so no staff help will be needed. They'll be outside and inside. In November, inside, but for October, they'll be outside. Um, so they'll be offering all three vaccine types, so J&J, &J, Moderna, and Pfizer. And um, the Pfizer, obviously, is you know, the only vaccine they're able to administer to children. And there must be um, parental, um, a parental consent form that has to be signed. Um, Griffin is also giving the third dose of Pfizer and Moderna to those who are um, immunocompromised and um, the booster Pfizer shots to patients um, who went six months, you know, before getting their second shot. So. Uh, Sherelle, I think uh, today the, the, the advisory board for the FDA approved the booster for Moderna. Um, I know Mohindar here on the, Zoom got his today. Um, I'm not sure it's actually uh, what the status is, but uh, I assume within the ne next few days or weeks, that is going to be uh, approved for over 65. Mm -hmm. um, do, do these uh, events at the library require appointment or they just walk up? Walk in. Okay. And what's been your sense of the utilization uh, I mean, is it a people waiting in line, a steady stream, or no? Uh, it it, it depends on the day and it depends on the time. Um, in the beginning, it's like you know when we first did it back in April, lines. Um, when we brought it back again, um, a little slow in the very beginning, but once people realized, then you know it, it picked up. So um, I think I would probably say slow to steady, depending on what time. We don't have lines yet. Okay. My guess is that if you, as I'm sure you do, listen to the news about when the Moderna booster has been approved by uh, CDC, which I think is imminent, then people over 65 who are some of our best patrons will be coming. Uh, so you might want to be prepared for uh, more utilization than you've had recently for a while is my guess. Perfect, okay. Good. Uh, is this being offered at both branches? Yes, it is. So both branches on our late nights, so uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then um, Mondays at Maine and Fridays at Sono. Unfortunately, no weekends when people might be off. I can't hear you, Patsy. I said, unfortunately, no weekends. No. No, but Griffin that, Hospital doesn't do weekends. I know I work with them. They only work Monday through Friday. They don't do weekends uh, unless it's a special. I special guess season. people don't get sick on weekends, right? <laughs> I don't know about Just that. Monday through Friday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so let's see. 
And so the facilities update, um, I worked with the fire marshal at the main library and he just made some suggestions about keeping um, the fire doors closed. Um, you know, it's sort of hard because we like the open, you know, we're a library, we want open and welcoming, but he made some good points, you know, about the reason the fire doors are there, um, you know, to prevent, you know, fire from going to other areas. Um, so, um, and then, you know, the ceiling tiles, same thing. If the ceiling tiles aren't in, um, the room doesn't know, you know, the, the, the smoke is going up, the room doesn't get hot enough. And so, um, anyway, um, I'm just trying to think of what else. So, um, Colin, Come on. I did read all of this because I've had a lot of experience with it and I thought it was pretty extensive. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we need to pay attention. Oh, definitely. And he definitely doesn't want those books, um, donation books, um, you know, in the exit area. It's, it's an eyesore for one, but also if people need to get out in an emergency. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was very happy to go. He's very nice, um, very educating. Um, so I was happy, you know, to go through the building with him. We'll also go through Sono. And I um, also have a list. I've taken pictures of things like mold and things that need to be taken care of in both buildings too. I just have to put it in order. I'll share it with the board and also with um, Guardian. Yeah, and that could be a potential uh, 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 source or you know, comment request for all of those potential needs upgrade with the uh, $39 million project money mm -hmm. available. Something to think about. Yeah. So Sherelle, could you add for the next uh, month the Sono, is there a, do you have a Sono report like this? I don't, the last time he was here, they didn't find very much. So, okay. but I, I, you know, I will ask All them right. to come back. Well, but that's yeah. good. Could you just keep this on the agenda and let's just take off every time yeah. something gets fixed. Okay. So we can kind of keep, keep track of it. Perfect, okay. And is there, um, so, Will the funding for some of this stuff come from the Guardian uh, facilities budget? Um, I believe most of it should. Um, particular, well, for this, it's just a matter like of ceiling tiles, moving things, keeping yeah. doors closed. But the other things like the mold, the leaks, um, that should come from Guardian's budget. Okay. And I do have it. I just wasn't prepared to share it. I have the pictures. Um, okay. you know, just to document instead of just writing it out. I wanted everybody to be able to see. So it took me a while to go through both buildings to, to take the pictures. Um, and I just have to put it in order. Okay. But I, I like us to be able to see as each one of these things gets dealt with, you know, you yeah. check it off. Sure. Okay. And that's it for me. I just shared, um, the Connecticut town profiles, because I thought it was interesting to compare um, Norwalk. It's something that I keep up with um, annually and Lamont is, you know, shared it as well. Um, but it was interesting to, you know, look at the surrounding towns that are very different, you know, from us, but just to see what they're doing and also um, the larger cities like, like um, Norwalk. Okay. It was just an FI, FYI. But I'll, you know, share it with supervisors as well to see, you know, in addition to the survey, um, any changes that we need to make. Okay. I actually printed it all out. <laughs> it's extremely helpful and it really so is. It's things fascinating. that I deal with and grant writing and mm -hmm. everything else. It's I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Very welcome. Okay, um, you know, uh, under old business, I neglected to list this uh, as Sherelle and I were exchanging back drafts, but um, uh, we are gonna be working on the uh, internet filter question to update our internet policy. I know that something that Sharon has been interested in. Mm -hmm. I meant to put it on and we had it on originally and then it, it just got removed, but uh, Hopefully by next month we'll be able to 
bring back some additional recommendations and uh, also to become more aware of what other libraries are, are doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the, if there's no new business. Alex, I, I just would like to share, unless you would like to, the Halloween plans. Oh, please do. So we're having um, outdoor stations. Um, so, you know, the kids can, you know, stop at one station at the main library, you know, pick up their bags. There'll be an area where they can get their candy, um, an area where they can do a craft. And, um, and then just so like it's, you know, real trick-or-treating, um, the other departments will have a little area, whether it's in the front or in the back where the kids can also trick or treat. And at Sono, we'll have one station, you know, where the kids can get their candy um, if they don't, you know, have their own bags or they can trick or treat if they do. And we're, uh, we'll have um, bubbles where the kids can go inside of bubbles um, for half an hour and then a comedy show and then um, a half an hour of, of balloon making. So do we give away any children's books? We will. We have tons of donations. And so as a matter of fact, one of our new part-timers mentioned having some to get some of these books and boxes <laughs> out of here to have um, an outdoor give, book giveaway. Great. And, oh, the, and, kids and be, sorry. the kids will be socially distant when they're waiting for Definitely. their bags and, and goodies and stuff. Mm -hmm. And even when they're watching, you know, the programs, they'll be socially distanced. And just one other update, um, Norwalk Reads is looking to um, revive again. We recently um, moved the books from one area um, where they were being stored to another area. Um, we had a meeting with Dr. Estrella about how we might be able to get the books to kids. Are people comfortable going into the schools? Um, you know, with some kids not being vaccinated, um, should we do something outdoors as far as a book giveaway? So she was amenable to both. And then our next meeting is with uh, the president of NCC to see if we can do book um, distributions there too. All righty. Any further questions? Did the um, cafe open? Yes. It did. Hey. And people are enjoying and sitting there. Yes, it did. Oh, thank you for saying that. I owe Neola for a bottle of water. <laughs> well, we've made our purchases. What book distribution are we doing the senior center also? For the, I'll ask Cindy. I know we talked about the senior center for the survey. Um, but I can talk to, oh, you mean for Norwalk Reads? Yeah. Norwalk Reads is, is, is for younger, um, for students. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, yeah. But we do have other, um, just, you know, we have other donations. Um, so yeah, I, I, I can talk to Cindy to see how she's getting books. I know she does, um, you know, I think book discussions and things like that. But actually getting books over there, I can discuss that yeah. with them. Darrell, can I ask, um, what is the status of the assistant director position that came up twice tonight? Is it, are you able to give us an update? Yeah, I'm, so Lamont and I will have that discussion. Um, my preference, honestly, would be to have a branch manager and to have um, what's called an access services manager. Um, and that would sort of be the uh, someone who would handle circulation, but also handle um, offsite. Uh, so we have the bookmobile that goes out, but just, you know, to have neighborhood collections and offsite collections as well. Thanks. So, sure, does that involve what, rewriting the job description or? I have put together um, a job description. Okay. I say when you and Lamont have to get together about it is, to get together to approve the rewritten job description? Yes. Am I frozen or, hold on. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, I think Alex is frozen. Oh, Alex, okay. Alex, Alex is frozen. Alex, because I'm, all, the, the Wi-Fi sometimes is just <laughs> horrible here.
Uh, Alex okay. is frozen. <laughs> <laughs> I do like his new haircut, though. I can't even <laughs> see him anymore. <laughs> yeah. So Patsy is the second. Well, I have assistant, uh, you know, um, are we ready to adjourn? I think so. Yes. Okay, so I, uh, shall I adjourn us? What do you guys want to do? Anybody want to move to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Okay, second. All those in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Unanimous decision, we're adjourned. And I want to apologize foundation? because I can't attend the next meeting. So um, I have a commitment. So mm -hmm. well, I'll email you. About yeah, we'll connect. Later. Let's connect. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. Yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be fun. Okay. Okay. See ya. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. See you soon. We got five minutes. <laughs>